Hello there everybody, this is 22TigerDude here, and welcome to my Black Friday update for the year 2017, or as I prefer to say Black Thursday, because most of the time it's normally on a Thursday rather than a Friday. And this video is going to be on both the 22 Tiger Dude channel and Universe of Bluetubers channel. So if you're watching this from the 22 Tiger Dude channel, welcome. And if you're watching this from the Universe of the Bluetubers channel, welcome. So just like last year, um, we did go to three stores and for this year after you know Thanksgiving dinner We started off with Walmart then we went to Target and then we went to Best Buy So that's the order. I'm really gonna show you guys So we're gonna go ahead and start off with Walmart and there is one video game that I did get from Walmart um, and that is Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. I have honestly been wanting to get this game since it came out earlier this summer. I have been dying to play this game. Um, you know, and now that I have a PS4, I definitely have been dying to get this game. And this was $19 at Walmart. So, of course, when I saw that, there's no way in hell I was going to pass that up. Plus, when you think about it, it's $19 for three games. So when you really think about it on that note, that's actually really, really dang good. When it comes to the trilogy, I haven't played it like from beginning to end, honestly, which kind of makes me sad considering I love these kind of games. But I do remember playing it in bits and pieces with my cousin who did own the Crash game. So I played it in bits and pieces growing up, but I've never played it all the way through. And I have heard not only is this remastered, but it is more insane than it was the original time. So I have played this so far. I'm in the first game. And yeah, I both love and hate this game. Hate in a good way, maybe. Love it because it is so much fun, but I hate it because, man, does this game really, really stress me out. But honestly, so far as I am playing this, I am having a ton of fun with Crash Bandicoot, the insane trilogy. I'm glad that after all these years, I have the opportunity to play it. And for this being remastered, I have to say, I did take a look at like the PS2 graphics and honestly, for it being remastered, it looks really dang great. The graphics just look spectacular. So yeah, this is the one I got from Walmart. The other video games in this update are from Best Buy, which obviously you're gonna have to wait way, way later on this update to see. But yes, this is the only game that I got at Walmart. Okay, now we're gonna start off with something big with this one. Now, this is the lunchbox edition of a certain movie, and I wouldn't normally go on my way to buy this, but the fact that at Walmart it was $9.95 for the lunchbox and the movie, and considering how much I did love the movie, that's right, it is the Lego Batman movie, as you can see in the back. It has both the Blu-ray DVD combo pack and the lunchbox. And yeah, you know, it's Lego Batman, and you know I love me some Batman, so I can't really complain having a lunchbox. Yeah, Lego Batman. Uh, if you guys have seen my review, I do love this movie. I think it's a great film. I do think it is one of the best animated films of the year. It is just such a creative film. It stands on its own from the Lego movie. It's definitely different from the Lego movie in a good way. I loved how they explored the history of Batman, the pros and the cons of it. The characters were entertaining. Will Arnett's great as, of course, Lego Batman. Zach Galifianakis is great as Lego Joker. Michael Cera's Robin was great. Rosario Dawson was great. Like everyone in the voice acting was great. And not to mention that the Lego Mation, even though at times the Lego Mation I know is a little bit off, for like I'm gonna say maybe 90 92 percent of the movie, the Lego Mation is on top. Now, next up is Spider Man Homecoming, and this was seven dollars at Walmart. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. I think this is a great film. Tom Holland really is great as Spider-Man. Robert Downey Jr. for the minimal screen time he has Iron Man, he's truly great. And Michael Keaton, I said in my movie review, one of the best villains 
in the MCU without a doubt. Michael Keaton was so great. Very happy they did not waste his talent because it's Michael Keaton. You just can't waste Michael Keaton and they used him to his full advantage. I can't wait to rewatch this film. I've been having the urge to rewatch it for some time now. Um, you know, and it's very well directed. It has that great John Hughes feel to it. The next movie is, yet again, believe it or not, another superhero movie and that is Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. I really enjoyed this movie. I did. I really liked it. It was funny. It was adorable. It was imaginative. It was creative. Honestly, it's one of the most uh, entertaining movies of the year. Maybe not one of the best per se, but it is, I think, one of the most entertaining movies of this year. This movie, in my opinion, is never ever boring. There's never a point in this film where I'm like, yeah, this movie's really boring. No, from beginning to end, this is a highly entertaining film with so much creativeness behind it. And me being someone that has not really um, read the Captain Underpants books, I have to say that I really like the movie. And I actually did get around to reading a Captain Underpants book after the movie. And I have to say, I really like it. I hope to read more books later down the line but as far as the movie goes yeah it's just really entertaining the voice acting is great with Ed Helms as Captain Underpants and Kevin Hart and Tom Middleditch uh, their, their voice work is great Nick Kroll is great in the film uh, Jordan Peele is also really great with his voice work everyone you could tell is having fun in the recording studio when it comes to this and not to mention that the animation is so beautiful. Honestly, animation wise, this is the first time I'm watching a DreamWorks Animation Studios going. This doesn't really feel like DreamWorks. Like, this feels more like something Nickelodeon Animation Studios would do, to be honest. Like, it doesn't really feel like a DreamWorks film, but um, you know, I mean that in a great way, of course. It just looks so stunning. It's so colorful. It's so energetic. I know they partnered up with a company to do the animation, something like that. Like, the Boss Baby has a higher budget, yet for me, I personally think the animation in this film is better than the Boss Babies. Now the next movie is 195, 196 at Walmart, and that is Curious George. I really like this movie, I've seen it plenty of times, but for some reason, I haven't really owned the movie until now. It's really weird. But yeah, I've rewatched this movie plenty of times. I really like it. It's cute. It's so adorable. It is what Curious George should be. And honestly, considering I'm not the biggest Will Ferrell fan, I, I wouldn't say I hate the guy or anything. I'm just, I'm just not necessarily a fan of him. But I have to say, Will Ferrell as the man in the yellow hat, really good in this film. Curious George is a big part of my life, honestly. I grew up reading the books. I even have a Curious George stuffed animal, so what does that tell you? Um, I've always loved this character, and even as an adult, I still love this character. Like, when it comes to my love for certain characters, my love for Curious George is never gonna die. The animation I also have to bring up is truly stunning here. Um, it really does capture that Curious George magic that I've grown up loving from the books. So yeah, only 196 at Walmart. I had to get this one and I'm so happy after all this time, I finally own the movie. The next one from Walmart is The Accountant, and this was $5.96. In fact, the rest of the movies from Walmart are $5.96, just to let you guys know that. But I love The Accountant. I truly think this is one of the best films of 2016. It's just such a riveting story. All the performances are really great. Ben Affleck truly is fantastic in this film. It's really cool to have a character um, like a hero, you could say, that is autistic. Like, I think that's actually really cool right there. Anna Kendrick's great in here too. Uh, everyone, honestly, is at the top of their game. And I hear that a sequel is happening now. While personally, I don't need a sequel. I love this 
film for the way it is as a standalone story, I wouldn't mind revisiting the world of the accountant. I think there's definitely many possibilities for what they could do with the story. So for $5.96, definitely had to get this at Walmart. The next movie that I did get from Walmart is The Conjuring 2. This is a very creepy horror sequel. It was $5.96 at Walmart. And I figured since I really liked the movie, why not own it? The Conjuring 2 definitely delivers. Personally for me, I do prefer the first film. The first film is a great horror film and this one's a very solid and really well done horror sequel. However, that still won't take away from how much I did truly really like The Conjuring 2. James Wan continues to just impress me with the camera work. Like, James Wan, he really is a freaking man. Like, that guy really knows how to direct. Not to mention that the performances in this film are very strong. Like, Madison Wolf, I I am correct right isn't that the name of the actress yeah Madison Wolf just want to make sure I didn't forget her name she was just truly great here Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson obviously they're gonna be great and not to mention that the cinematography is so beautiful in this film really just wow such great cinematography great filmmaking a really engaging storyline very happy to own the conjuring 2 and now for the final movie that i did get from walmart kong skull island this was also 596 at walmart and I actually had a lot of fun with Kong Skull Island. I know that there's people out there that were disappointed by it and I could see why personally but even with the flaws that this film did have and, uh, and obviously I did address those flaws in my movie review that I did do with my best friend Mr. J. We both actually reviewed this film together. I've honestly been wanting to rewatch this film since. Uh, I, it honestly gave me what I wanted in a, out of a monster movie, which is just very fun action. All the scenes with King Kong are definitely just some of the best moments in this entire film. And while you don't have necessarily maybe the deepest characters, I did really like them. The cinematography in this film, oh man, don't be surprised if you hear me bring up cinematography a lot in this update, but it is truly beautiful like honestly i would even argue and say that kong skull island has some of the best cinematography i've seen all year I like that's how great i think the cinematography is it's just so well shot it's very colorful like the use of the color palettes in kong skull island really impressed me i did just overall really like the storyline i had a ton of fun with it so that's the walmart stack and now we're going to go ahead and get into the Target stack. So, the next movie I've been wanting to get for a while. It was on sale for Black Friday, and I'm so happy to have it. La La Land at Target. And wow, look how shiny the slipcover is. Like, just look at this majesty. I believe it was like $6.95 or $7.95, $8.95. It's definitely somewhere around there. But I really liked La La Land. Now, yes, I didn't love the film, but I did really like it. And when I say I really like but don't love a film, I don't say that as a bad thing. I mean, why would I go on my way to buy the Blu-ray DVD if I didn't like the film? Like, just think about that. Now, although there weren't as many musical numbers as I thought the film was going to have, particularly when we get to the second half of the film, I do still really like it. And whenever we do get to the musical numbers, I love, I love, love, love those scenes. Like, I really like the movie, but whenever we get to the musical numbers, I absolutely adore it. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, they're honestly really great in this film. Both of them give such great, memorable performances. Obviously, Damien Chazelle nails it when it comes to his direction. His direction for La La Land is truly beautiful. With him offering a fantastic, phenomenal movie i should say like whiplash and then a solid movie like la la land yeah I, I i can't wait bring whatever you have to offer damien chazelle i can't wait all right the next movie i've been wanting to own for a while too and i found it for like six dollars at target the secret life of pets 
Now, I honestly did like The Secret Life of Pets. I mean, I like it more than most of the Despicable Me movies and Minions combined. Like, I'll take this over those sequels and Minions. I do like the first Despicable Me, not gonna disrespect that, but I did like The Secret Life of Pets. I think it is a fun movie. I can understand why people are disappointed and I can understand the criticism of how it borrows elements from like Toy Story. But then again, what movie doesn't borrow elements from other movies? A ton of movies. Uh, really when you think about it they do do that but it's just a matter of how you execute the storyline and if you actually care now if i didn't care about this film maybe that would have been a major problem for me but because i cared about the characters and i really do care about these characters and because of how much i did love this world of talking dogs talking cats what life is like when the owners are out doing something like going to work or taking care of errands and then you just have these pets that just don't have their owners around i do think they explore that concept very well and not to mention that there's a lot of funny moments in this film one of my issues with the film is that it's not as heartwarming as i think it could have been it does have a sweet ending but that's like maybe the only time I felt some sort of heart with the film. I think there could have been more heartwarming stuff to it. And I am looking forward to the sequel. I know Louis C.K. is no longer going to be in the sequel because the allegations. I mean, I really don't want to say too much, but the allegations in Hollywood lately, man, that's... Oh, that, that that's such a shame right there but you know moving past that don't really want to discuss that honestly uh, I am looking forward to the sequel and I hope the sequel could be just as much fun if not maybe maybe be even a little bit better than the first we'll just have to wait and see but I am looking forward to the sequel all right now the next one is Cars 3 I got this for ten dollars at Target now I know Cars 3, as with the Cars movies in general, they're not some of the most beloved movies, but I do like the Cars world. I like being in this world where, yes, there's no owners, Yes, you'd never see gases being put inside these cars to keep going and going. But honestly, because I like this world so much, thinking about stuff like that, it's not really worth it, honestly, at least for me. And I did really like Cars 3. Yes, can it be a little bit slow in moments? It can be, but overall the majority of the movie really entertained me i really got behind the story and they went back to the roots of the first film uh it, it was so nice to see lightning mcqueen being the main star again major i honestly do still really like for the minimal screen time he does have and i did like following cruz ramirez um you know, when they introduced her in the film, I wasn't really too fond of the character. But then as we learned more about her, I got behind her and I felt fully invested with the character. And I do like where they went with this journey with this character. It was really nice. It was really sweet. Yes, most of the humor, I'll admit, does not work. But because I do think the storyline is well written, it's one of those cases where even if most of the humor didn't work, it doesn't really get in the way of the storyline for me. And the animation. I mean, this is Pixar. Regardless of what you think of this film, holy crap, the animation is just so stunning. I really can't stress that enough. So yeah, Cars 3, I really liked it. Yes, not one of Pixar's best films or anything, but I, personally, I don't think every single Pixar film has to be like one of the best ever. You know, it's all about if a film entertained me and Cars 3 did entertain me and that's why I bought it. Now the next movie my mom did get and that movie is The Magnificent Seven. Now, a little fun story about this movie, first of all, because, yes, I never did a video review for it. Technically, I did, but here's what happened. Remember when my previous laptop decided to no longer turn on for me? 
uh, crazy to think it's been a year since that happened. It was around October, but I actually did record a video review for The Magnificent Seven. Like, it was literally all recorded. I literally said everything I needed to say about the film. And just when I was gonna get ready to edit the film, <sighs> The footage I had was in my previous laptop, the laptop that would no longer turn on. So all the footage I had there is now gone forever and I just haven't had the motivation to refilm it honestly. So that's why that video review never happened. But if I were to give you my little review of it right now, I'll try my best to say as many as I can. This is a very well directed film. It is directed by Antoine Fuqua and he does do a really great job directing it. As far as the Western setting goes, this does feel like a Western movie. Not to mention the entire cast is great here. Denzel Washington, I mean, it's a cliche to say it, but he is so fantastic. This guy was lost in this role. He really is great. Same thing for Chris Pratt. It was cool to see Chris Pratt in a Western film. Ethan Hawke, as expected, is a ton of fun in this film. I really thought he was really great. By Yoong Hun Lee, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. He's obviously really great. And Vincent D'Onofrio, in case I didn't bring him up. He is a ton of fun in this film. The voice he uses in this film is weird, however, but he is still a ton of fun. If I have to say quick gripes with the film, the villain, played by Peter Skarsgård, he is so great when we're introduced to him. He was so menacing, and then after that, they don't really do much with him. Haley Bennett, I'll be honest, wasn't really that good as far as her acting goes, I think. <sighs> she's not that good like honestly in the movies I've seen her in she really has not impressed me and this is no different I think she's definitely the weakest performance when it comes to this film honestly just personally didn't really care for her and obviously it's gonna have its cliches and predictability but honestly overall what this film succeeded at doing which is just being this really fun western action film it was very well done if i had to give you guys a rating it would be three out of four stars the action sequences so so thrilling and so exciting and honestly it would have my heart pounding oh and not to mention that james horner rest in peace to him composed a really great score for this film. The next one my mom got because she really loves this movie. I like the movie too, but she like loves this movie and that is Wonder Woman. This was $9.99 at Target and as I said, I like the movie, I really do. I may not love it, like everyone else, but I do like it. Patty Jenkins did a beautiful job directing this film. Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman is of course fantastic. She really does embody this character. It's really hard to see anyone replace her. And the fact that she was pregnant while filming this movie, um, huge props to you, Gal. Huge, huge props to you. Uh, Chris Pine obviously is great. The movie is more colorful than most of the DC Extended Universe films. But yeah, this is a very well-made movie. I think it's very solid. Maybe not one of the best comic book movies ever made for me, but I do re really enjoy the movie. I think it's good. I like it. The next one is Hidden Figures. This one my mom also did get because she really liked it. And I really like this movie too. Like, I feel like this is a very important movie. It got... Uh, you know, Best Picture nomination at the Oscars, and I think it's nice that it got nominated because I think we do need more films like Hidden Figures. It really is inspiring to see these three African-American women getting through the hard times because, you know, they're in the era where, um, you know, we're in the prejudice times. I mean, we could still have prejudice to this day, but obviously it was like really, really awful. Um, so to see them get by and having to work hard, it was really great to see. And Theodore Melfi, who wrote and directed this film, he did a really solid job of writing and directing this film. Taraji P. Henson, Octavia Spencer, ah uh, man, she just slipped my mind right now. Janelle Monet, Kevin Costner, you know, you name it, Jim Parsons. Everyone's really great in this film. It's just a really nice history lesson, I think. And the fact that this did so well at the 
box office really is amazing. Obviously, this movie must have impacted people if it did this well at the box office. And I think uh, it was a chance that Theodore Melfi took and it paid off. All right, now the next movie my mom did get as well, and that is Passengers. Now, um, this is similar to Magnificent Seven, except it's more of me attempting to do a video review and it just never came together. So, here's yet another story regarding passengers. I did attempt to film a video review for it, but there were some things that happened during the recording process. It just didn't turn out well. The video didn't look good. I felt like I didn't do a good job of really giving all my details on the film. And I could feel that way sometimes with film reviews. Um, you know, like I feel like I don't get everything down to a T, but I'll still post it because I'm happy enough with how the video turns out. But no, with Passengers, I thought the video was a disaster and similar to The Magnificent Seven, I just didn't have the motivation to really re-record the video but if you really need to hear my thoughts on it i think it's okay at best it's a two and a half star movie i really like chris pratt here and i really like jennifer lawrence here and there was nice chemistry between them and i remember i did like the setup of the film but just the storytelling, I felt like there wasn't really much to it. And yeah, obviously there's some cool things that happen in the film, but just something about the storyline just wasn't really all that impressive. Not to mention that Andy Garcia, who you do see in the trailer, it's not a spoiler, he's actually shown in the trailer, and yet somehow, he only shows up in like the last like 40 seconds of the movie and he says nothing and yet in the end credits they still credit him for some reason my mom did like this film however that's why she bought it but for me it's it's okay the next film i had to get because it's the wizarding world and i did like this film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And I know they just recently announced the title for the sequel, which I am really looking forward to. I can't wait for the second Fantastic Beasts movie. But as far as the first one goes, obviously I'm a fan of the Harry Potter films. And as far as introducing us to, you could say the younger generation, of the Harry Potter characters, I thought it was a very nice introduction. It did capture the magic of Harry Potter, like the magic of the wizarding world, I should say. I really cared about these characters. I thought Eddie Redmayne was really great as Newt Scamander. Obviously, Dan Fogler and Catherine Waterston and just everyone else in this film, they were all really great. The cinematography is beautiful. David Yates does a beautiful job directing this film. Um, definitely a better film than The Legend of Tarzan, which I didn't hate. It was okay. It was fine. But for me, this was definitely a better film than the other David Yates movie that came out that year. So very happy to own Fantastic Beasts. Um, after seeing how this film ended, it has me curious to see how they can continue on the story and the sequel. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Solid flick. I think it was like $5.96 at Target. And... That's why I got it. The next one from Target is Hacksaw Ridge. Great, great war film. Really great movie. I love this movie so much. Mel Gibson truly does a great job directing this film. It feels so good to see Mel Gibson direct a movie again, and I hope he could direct more as time comes, but man, what a comeback for Mel Gibson as far as the director's chair goes. The war sequences are just so intense and so brutal, so haunting. It was just so moving, especially for Andrew Garfield's performance. He is so great as Desmond does. Just how Mel Gibson told this true story really was just so engaging. Everyone gives 
excellent performances. It's not just Andrew Garfield. Everyone gives excellent performances here. Vince Vong, um, who I know has been getting to more dramatic roles after this film, he's really great in this film too. Obviously, Teresa Palmer is also great. Hugo Weaving, who gives like one of the best supporting performances I've seen possibly ever. It really flies by too. Like, it's very well paced, honestly. It really is such a powerful movie and that's why I definitely had to get it. The next movie is The Big Sick. One of the best movies of 2017 in my humble opinion. I love this movie so so much. If you haven't seen this movie I highly recommend watching it because it truly is such a great story. It's honestly one of the best rom-coms I've ever seen personally. I think even if you're not a fan of rom-coms I think you could still enjoy watching The Big Sick. Kumail Nanjiani and his real life wife Emily did such a beautiful full job of writing the script. The direction is really great. Cinematography is beautiful and everyone gives great performances. Kumail Nanjiani is great at both the comedic moments and the dramatic moments. Zoe Kazan as Emily is really great too. And of course also Holly Hunter and Ray Romano are fantastic as Emily's parents. I love them so much and everyone else really is just so great. Um, this movie just came off so natural. It was just so genuine. It was very funny, definitely as far as comedies go. Definitely one of the funniest movies of this year. Considering comedies this year have not been the strongest, but definitely as far as comedies go, this is by far one of the strongest ones. I was laughing so hard. But of course, when the movie gets more dramatic, you know, I really feel the emotional impact. I do get emotional watching this film, and I'm pretty sure on a rewatch I'll get even more emotional watching it. I really love The Big Sick. I really was hoping to just like it at least. Like, I was just hoping like, oh, I really like that movie, but wow, I ended up loving this movie. I really love this movie so much. I found this at Target for I think $6. I think it was only like $6 when I saw it. And the minute I saw it, I'm like, yep, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And now the final movie I got from Target, and it's also one of the best movies I've seen this year, War for the Planet of the Apes. I mean, everyone has said it. I agree with the people that just think this movie is truly phenomenal. This is a work of art. This movie is, I think, a near masterpiece. It is so well paced, um, considering how much it takes its time with the story. Besides a few parts, I'm talking maybe three parts, where I thought the movie was dragging a bit. And that's about it. And even when the film was dragging, eventually it does pick up. So it doesn't feel too, too long when it's dragging, which is the great thing about this film. Um, this is absolutely engaging. It's so riveting. This is how you conclude a trilogy. And man, you want to talk about one hell of a trilogy. Damn, this is one of those trilogies. I mean, obviously, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I think it's a great film. Technically speaking, it is the weakest, but considering I'm calling it still a great film, what does that tell you? So yeah, even if Rise is technically the weakest in this trilogy, it is still a great movie and I still love it. I love Dawn even more and I love this one just as much as Dawn. Between this and Dawn, honestly, I have to really think about it. Um, but they're both, honestly, four out of four star worthy movies for me. I mean, the special effects are so mind-blowing, seriously some mind-blowing visual effects. Caesar continues to be such a great character and he obviously has changed so much since Rise and you really just feel his pain. You can see that he's had enough uh, of the shit and he just uh, proves to show why he's honestly one of the best characters in movie history. Obviously all the other characters are great and the motion capture is great and Woody Harrelson plays one hell of an antagonist in this film and you could see where he's coming from. The cinematography is absolutely phenomenal like especially when they're out in the snow it looks absolutely breathtaking. The action though not much of it definitely not an action-packed movie or anything but when the action's there it's really awesome. 
one of my minor gripes is that with everything that these movies have set up, you would think there would be some kind of big war, and there really isn't a huge war going on. On. However, because of how much I fell in love with the storytelling and the dialogue and these characters that it's not too bothersome. It just bugs me a little bit, but it's not enough to really bring the movie down for me. It's honestly a terrific conclusion to such a terrific trilogy. And of course, I had to definitely get War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, there are mostly movies I got from Best Buy online but there are a few movies from Best Buy as well as a few video games that I did get from Best Buy. So the first movie I had to get is Gifted. This movie first of all was like $4.99 at Best Buy. $4.99. I couldn't believe it. If you all have seen my movie review for Gifted I think it's a great movie. I think this is honestly one of the best movies of this year. It's such a great movie. I truly love Gifted. I thought McKenna Grace was really great in the film. Definitely one of the strongest child performances I've seen in a while. Chris Evans obviously gives a great performance and it's a nice way for him to take a break from playing Captain America because lately Chris Evans has just been Captain America, Captain America. But it is nice to see him, excuse me there, sorry. Um, but it is really nice to see him do something like this. And if you haven't seen Gifted, I do recommend it. It is from Mark Webb, who directed 500 Days of Summer. And you know, I've said a bunch of times, I don't have any hate for both of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And I know he has another film from this year. He has two films, he has this one, and he has The Only Living Boy in New York. Gotta see that one eventually. But I do think Gift is such a heartfelt story. It's funny. It's very funny, definitely. There were so many moments that had me laughing. But of course, when we do get to the more heartwarming moments, it feels sincere. And that's why I definitely had to own Gifted. Such a, such a great movie. The next movie from Best Buy is Everything, Everything. Now, I did see this movie in the theater. I was not really looking forward to this movie. I had very meh expectations for it. Like, I wouldn't say I was necessarily dreading it. I'm just like, eh, okay, whatever. You know, I'm still gonna give it a chance, but I'm not, I, I don't necessarily have high expectations for it. I gotta say, I liked it. I, I liked it a lot. What can I say? Uh, this movie surprised me. Like, honestly, I think this is one of the most surprising movies of the year. It's a good kind of cheese, surprisingly. I did like the cheesy, romantic bits. And I think it's because I did buy into Nick Robinson, who, by the way, I think is a very underrated actor. Um, I'm glad to be seeing him in more stuff, because I've been a big fan of this guy since Melissa and Joey. But he's been doing a good job of showing that he has dramatic chops, too. And he really is great here. Same with... I think it's Amanda Stenberg. Uh, let me see in the back very right quick. I really want to get her name right. Um, okay, if I don't get it right, I'll put it down here. But I'm pretty sure last time I checked, it was Amanda Stenberg. And she was actually really great, too. I thought these two um, actors gave such charming performances. I bought into their romance. Some of the stuff that does happen, yes, they're pretty unrealistic. And I would say... That's definitely uh, one of my issues with the film, that certain things that these two do um, wouldn't actually happen in real life. It is pretty unrealistic, definitely. Um, but I did find the storyline to be very interesting, and that's why I got it, because after seeing it, I'm like, you know what? I can see myself rewatching it. All right, so the last movie from Best Buy, at least as far as going to Best Buy and getting one, is... Moana and actually I did not get this movie my mom actually did buy this movie I know there's people that were rather disappointed with my thoughts on this film but I was not big with Moana I was very let down like you guys know I was really anticipating this film this was one of my most anticipated movies of last year and when I saw it in the theater I was it, it really let me down. Like, granted, there's some genuinely 
good things, I'd say even great things about this film, but ultimately, when I look back at it, it's just so forgettable. Gettable. It just does not stick with me the same way movies like Tangled, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Wreck-It Ralph do. Like, it just doesn't stick with me as far as these 2010s Disney Renaissance movies go. I would even say 2011's Winnie the Pooh, which I really like that one. I will say between this and Frozen, this is slightly better than that film. I'll definitely give it that. It is slightly better than Frozen, but unfortunately this movie and Frozen, in my opinion, are the weakest Disney films out of the 2010s Disney animated like Renaissance uh, features. Yes, on an animation level it is gorgeous. There are some really great musical numbers that go along with it. And the voice work is great. I just didn't feel like there was much to the storyline. Like, I thought the adventure they were going to go on was going to be this really grand adventure and the the adventure they went on wasn't really that exciting not to mention that the humor in this film my goodness it falls flat <laughs> it falls really flat um and it, it felt so rushed in the climax too for what i remember i really was not impressed with Moana. i think it's okay it's not horrible it's not it's disappointing. My mom did like this movie however and that's why she got it. So this movie right here is more for my mom because she actually did enjoy it but for me yeah. Now for the video games and this one should be pretty quick because I don't have too much to say but the first video game I did get from Best Buy is Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. This is the second Lego video game I've ever owned. The first Lego video game I've owned was Lego The Avengers. That one's for my PS3, however. So I have that one for the PS3. And now I have this one for the PS4. So this is the first Lego video game I've owned for a PS4. I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't played a whole lot of these Lego games, but I have played a few of them. And for the few I played, I've had a lot of fun with them. And I mean, it's Star Wars. It was $19.99 at Best Buy, which I think is actually a very good price. So honestly, yeah, I look forward to playing this game. It looks like a ton of fun for sure. And I can't wait to play it. Now the next video game, and the minute I got this video game, I had to take a picture and message it to my good friend FilmFan0599 because I got W2K18. I actually do like these wrestling video games. I may not watch the actual wrestling, but I do like to play these wrestling video games. And I'm very happy to have the very newest one, like the new new one, which is 2K18. I'm pretty sure, no doubt, the graphics is going to be a whole lot better. And, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to some nice, good old-fashioned wrestling. Um, I have a lot of fun just wrestling the shit out of some guys. And, yeah, so... Can't really say too much about this one, but for sure, I look forward to playing it. And for the final video game I did get at Best Buy, it's MXGP2, the official motocross video game. Now, I actually like these kind of video games, I do, so I figured when I saw this, I figured, eh, why not? There's not much I could really say because clearly I haven't played it. I mean, I haven't even opened up these games yet. The gameplay looks great, the graphics look great, and yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. I mean, I have liked these games for what I played, so yeah, that's all I can really say. That's the final video game from Best Buy, final video game and this update in general. All right, you guys, so the update is not quite done yet. Now I have to wait for four more movies to come into the mail and then this Black Friday update is gonna be complete. So let's go ahead and wait and yeah. All right, everybody. So movie number one came in the mail just today. And that first movie from Best Buy Online is Eddie the Eagle. 
Now, I forgot how much I got this for online. I think this was $4.99 or $5.99. But it's personally just one of my favorite sports based on a true story films I've seen in a while actually. I really love this movie. Like yes, it doesn't break any new grounds. Yes, it does have the formulaic sports tropes. But I wasn't really bothered by that because I felt like the storytelling was really great here. I thought Taron Edgerton was really great as Eddie. Hugh Jackman was really great as his coach. And the rest of the performances were really great. Like Christopher Walken, he's only in this film, 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 God, I can't talk. Christopher Walken, he's only in this film for like two minutes, but he was still really good. Cinematography is absolutely good gorgeous. It's very well directed. Matthew Vaughn is the producer for this film and I think it's great that he produced this film and I probably wouldn't be surprised if that's why Taron Edgerton uh, was in this film because you know Matthew Vaughn, Taron Edgerton, Kingsman, The Secret Service. Um, so yeah it, it makes sense but I think that's great and it was nice to see Taron Edgerton in something that wasn't just the Kingsman film. Um, if you want to see Taron Edgerton in something that isn't just like the Kingsman movies definitely go our way to see Ada Eagle he truly is fantastic really loved him here and not to mention that I love love the soundtrack to this film the 80s soundtrack is so awesome honestly this movie has some of the best 80s soundtrack I've ever heard in a film I really thought it fit this atmosphere so well and it really is inspiring because despite the fact that Eddie really does suck at ski jumping he is not willing to give up and I really loved how that was portrayed here in A the Eagle I've been wanting to rewatch this film I know I say a lot for a lot of these films but I mean there's a reason I buy these films right I can't wait to rewatch this film it made me so happy definitely one of those films I can honestly pop in if I feel sad like if I don't feel the greatest I can honestly just pop in this film and just feel so good and feel so happy and that's why I got A the Eagle now to wait on for more movies to come in the mail Alright you guys, two movies came in the mail. I'm surprised it took this long, but um, it finally came in. And now the first one out of these two, because two came in. The first one is Girls Trip. Uh, as you guys know, I love this film and I really was not looking forward to this film. Like I was really drained. Obviously I went to it with an open mind like I do with every film. Doesn't matter how much I'm drained to film you guys, I always go in with the open mind that it could be better than what I'm expecting. Maybe it could be a good film. Um, you know, just be something pleasant. And I'm always glad I do that. Even if a movie I notice gets bad reviews beforehand, I still go in with it with an open mind that's just me personally and as much as I was during this film I was just praying to the heavens please 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 be better than what I am um, expecting and thank God it is the complete opposite of an awful film because I, I hated the trailers like I thought the trailers were so bad I was not a fan of the marketing at all but the film itself the final product is thankfully a great one this is honestly the most surprising film of the summer and honestly even of the year I could not believe how funny girls trip was and this is from Malcolm D Lee who also did direct like barbershop the next cut and I thought that was a good film I liked that one a lot and I thought he did a really great job directing girls trip it's a very well directed film cinematography wise it's honestly some of the best I've seen for a comedy film like this like cinematography is actually really gorgeous even for something like this it's quite amazing how just spot on the lighting is and the entire cast just have amazing chemistry and honestly after suffering through something like rough night 
I really did love the entire cast. Queen Latifah's great. Jada Pinkett Smith is great. Um, Regina Hall is great. And Tiffany Haddish. Everyone has said it. She is hilarious in this film. She's really, really funny. And I hope she can use more of her comedic chops in the future. And not only is this film very funny, funny, but it is pretty heartfelt. I've said everything I already need to say in my movie review for this film. If you haven't checked out my movie review, it is up on my channel if you want to get like my full thoughts on the film. So that's why I got Girls Trip. And now here's a film I know did not get the greatest of reviews. I had a lot of fun with this film, however. The Grey Wall. I thought there was a lot of entertainment value with this film. I know there can be many out there that could disagree with me saying that, and that is perfectly okay. Everyone is allowed to have their own different opinions. That's what makes the world of films great. We're always not going to see eye to eye, but I did really like this film. I actually did really like Matt Damon in this role. It was really fun to see him. Yes, his accent does go in and out, <laughs> but the Despite that, I did like Matt Damon here. He did look like he really had fun. Willem Dafoe does feel very out of place, however. Just, wow. Like, yeah. Uh, Willem Dafoe, I love you, but definitely shouldn't have been in this film. But besides that, I did feel everyone else, even Matt Damon, really did fit this role. Pedro Pascal, too, which, fun fact, he was also in Kingsman The Golden Circle. Also a grand that one, too. But Pedro Pascal, I did like him I did like him in that one, too. I just had a lot of fun with the action sequences. Um, there were a lot of stunning visuals. There were also very noticeable ones. Um, you know, I'm not gonna pretend there aren't any noticeable ones, because there for sure are. But there's stunning visuals too to go along with it. It's very colorful and that's why I got The Great Wall. I honestly really liked it. This is the DVD by the way. It's not the Blu-ray. This is just the DVD of it. And now we have to wait for one final movie to come into the mail. Yes, I did get a haircut, thank you for noticing, but after I actually got my haircut, that's when I went to go check the mail, and the final movie has arrived. And you guys are about to find out what that final movie is. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so to conclude this year's Black Friday update, the final movie I have, and the final movie to come from the mail is... Get Out. Yeah, I really liked Get Out. Um, I was very impressed by it. It was a movie I was looking forward to, and I was not disappointed. I think it's a solid movie. It is so creative. It's so original. And... When you really think back what Jordan Peele did with this film, he really did avoid the horror tropes, like something we're normally used to seeing in horror movies. You could tell that Jordan Peele avoided that. He really did such a very good job of putting the script together. His direction is very well done. Daniel Kaluuya, man does this guy have some serious acting chops. And everyone else really is so good. To get something like this for the horror genre really is so refreshing, honestly. Yeah, that's Get Out. Um, that's a, that's gonna conclude the Black Friday update. I really did like this film. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what did you guys get for Black Friday? If you wanna comment your opinion on all the following movies and video games I show in this update, that is perfectly up to you. But the real question I do wanna ask is, what did you guys get for Black Friday if you did go out? I'd be very interested to know that you get any movies, did you get any video games? Did you get any clothing? Did you get any cooking utensils? Did you get a big flat screen TV? And if you didn't do Black Friday shopping, how was your Thanksgiving? I'd be very interested to know uh, how was everyone's Thanksgiving? What you guys just do in general? How's life? Thanks so much for watching this update, you guys. This has definitely been a jam-packed update without a doubt. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.